Good morning. Thank you to our choir for a beautiful prelude today. It's good for us to be in worship. Psalm 118, verse 24, repeat after me. This is the day, is the, day. The, Lord the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice. and be glad in it. So, as I was saying, welcome to worship. I'm Rob James, blessed to be one of your pastors. Uh, if you haven't heard the word, Pastor Scott is out sick this week. He's doing okay, but we continue to pray for him and Wendy. Pray for all who uh, are struggling with illness. Uh, COVID's still a thing, and it's still around. And so, uh, if you're feeling ill, we encourage you to, to continue to take care of yourself and until you know what you got to just maybe take some space from others to make sure that you're keeping one another safe as well uh, in that. But uh, an exciting day for us, Reformation Sunday. Today at 1030, we have our youth who finish confirmation affirming their baptism. So a wonderful day. Uh, we invite you, if you're online in worship, to use the comments to say good morning. If you're here in person, to use those attendance cards. Make sure you fill one of those out for every household so that we know not just who's here, but we can pay attention to who's missing too, so we can be good at being in community together. If you've got your announcements, I want to highlight a few things. There's way too much in here to get through it all. First, something about the heat. I now have control of the HVAC, and so that's why we're willing to wear robes again. And so if you're cold, move forward. It's colder in the back of this room than it is in the front of the room. If you're still cold, we have plenty of these white albs. We're willing to put one on you. You may end up preaching. Just saying. Uh, today, actually, we do have an issue with the HVAC. Uh, they're working to get that fixed this week, and so it might be a little bit chillier in here than normal. We apologize for that. But moving forward, the ceiling's lower back there. The HVAC comes out right there. Move forward, and it won't be quite as bad going on through the winter. Uh, tutoring at Johnson Elementary. We're so grateful to be in partnership with Johnson Elementary right down the street here. They are getting settled into this new school year, and uh, Miss Amber, our principal, reached out and said, we're ready for tutors. And so if you've got 30 minutes during the week, I guarantee it'll be some of the best 30 minutes you spend. I was grateful to do it this past spring. We know some of you traveling, you're like, well, I don't want to commit because I travel. That's okay. Sign up, be a tutor. Let your teacher know when you're going to be there and when you're not. But taking 30 minutes to work with kids can make all the difference. And so if you are at all available during the school day, how amazing would it be if all of us were there bombarding the school with love and grace and being in the relationship with these kids. So signups are right out there. There will be a meeting this Wednesday at 830 at Johnson just a quick tra training for us. There is a background check form. Even if you've done it for the last 10 years, you need to fill out the background check form. So fill that out, have it ready, pick the time slot that works for you. And uh, if you can be there Wednesday, if not, we'll get you the information, but excited to get tutors back in Johnson, making a difference in these teachers and these students' lives. Uh, this Thursday, our Welk, our Women of the ELCA is hosting League of Women Voters for a presentation. I encourage you to let us know and come and be a part of that presentation this Thursday night. On Friday night, we will be the hosts here of Rockford Area Lutheran Ministries Trivia Night. There are flyers out there. You can sign up as an individual or you can put your team of eight together or anywhere in between. Um, you can take the form, but really you can sign up on Rockford Area Lutheran Ministries website. So you can do that. You can either pay through that or you can just pay in person when you come Friday night. But if you're a trivia person, I encourage you to come and have a fun night with a lot of other of our area Lutheran friends. Some of you have been very, very patient with me uh, as we've tried to figure out what is it, when do we have a new member class? And so we've got that coming up now in November. Two options, either come Mondays, November 7th and 21st, 
or Sunday, November 20th. Desserts provided, because uh, we want to talk about how sweet it is to be a part of this community of faith. And so if you're interested and those dates don't work for you, please let us know so we can have more conversation, but excited to welcome some of you fully into membership here at Our Saviors. I do want to just give a warning today, right? Scripture is full of lots of stories, stories that often connect uh, to our own story and maybe draw out lots of emotions for us. Today's story does deal with infant loss. And so before we get to today's scripture, I just want to share that warning with those of you that may need to prepare yourself and whatever is appropriate for you to hear that word. Uh, it is a fifth Sunday of the month. And whenever there's a fifth Sunday of the month, when we invite all to come and receive communion, we also invite you, if you choose, to stop for a simple anointing and healing prayer. And so after you receive communion, as you head towards the baskets, there will be anointers. They simply have oil to make the sign of the cross on your forehead as they say this one-line prayer. And so if you choose, you'll stop, receive that anointing before heading back to your seats. If you don't know, uh, we're in the midst of a capital campaign here at Our Saviors, bridging uh, no, beyond ourselves, bridging today into tomorrow. We have an announcement tonight that is super exciting. I hope you're planning on being a part of it. Tonight is our all-church dinner celebration. We're going to be at Montatisi Country Club from 5 to 7. Uh, so remember, if you RSVP'd, 5 to 7, that's tonight. If you didn't RSVP, I know we have plenty of extra room. Just give us a heads up so we can be ready for you. But if you didn't RSVP and you said, you know what, I am able to be there, we would love to have you there. We haven't announced nobody other than me and Emily, our council president, know this news yet, uh, but it is exciting, and so I hope you'll be there to share it. If you can't make it tonight, we'll be mailing out information to you tomorrow so that you get all the information that is handed out tonight. Uh, with that, I invite up Bill and Carolyn Kobler, two of our wonderful leaders here at Our Saviors, to share their story of generosity. Good morning. Uh, as Pastor Rob said, we are Bill and Carolyn Kobler, and we've been proud to call our Savior's Lutheran Church our church home for almost 48 years. We're both very thankful that our parents modeled for us regular church attendance and generous giving from our very youngest days. And we also share a common history of grandfathers who served the church. My grandfather was a custodian at Moreland Lutheran Church in Chicago and he lived in an apartment in the church building. On one wall of the social hall where I would play with my cousins during family gatherings was a large window with the figure of Jesus that, that was in the sanctuary, it was behind the altar. I remember looking at that window and admiring the beauty and the rich colors of the stained glass. My grandfather was a custodian of Emanuel Lutheran Church near Cashton, Wisconsin. He was also the grave digger and the bell ringer. It was his job to go up into the bell tower on Saturday evenings to ring the bell, to let everyone know that there would be worship services at the church the next day. And I remember my mom always making sure to put some money in the offering envelope each week, even during the tough times on the farm. This was done with a sense of thankfulness for the blessings we had received. Over the last few weeks, you have heard Temple Talks telling stories of generosity. There are many stories we could tell of generosity as well. And some of the most generous gifts we have received are those from the people we have known and loved in this place, Our Savior's Lutheran Church. Over the last 48 years, through good and difficult times, we have known many pastors and congregation members who have celebrated our joy and supported us in our sorrow, taught us and learned alongside us, worshiped with us and served with us. There are simply not words to express our gratitude for what you have given and continue to give to us. We can only respond to your generosity by being generous ourselves. 
In his sermon two weeks ago, Pastor Rob said, yes, I was listening. Our existence is dependent on God's gifts to us. And Catholic priest and theologian Henry Nouwen wrote, gratitude flows from the recognition that who we are and what we have are gifts to be received and shared. Gratitude releases us from the bonds of obligation and prepares us to offer ourselves freely and fully for the work of the kingdom. From the gift of creation to the promise of eternal life, God has shown his generosity to us. We must respond, we need to respond, and it feels good when we respond. How many times have you said to someone or heard from someone, happy birthday, happy anniversary, Merry Christmas? When we are the recipient of these wishes, we are filled with joy, excitement, and anticipation, for often they are accompanied by a gift. And how do we respond? Often we say, thank you, with a warm smile and perhaps a hug. Now, think about how you feel when you say them. Do you not feel the same excitement and anticipation? Do you not feel just as much joy as when you receive the thank you, the warm smile, the hug, and maybe even some shared tears? Giving feels good. Our campaign Bible verse is Ephesians 3.20. Now glory be to God. By God's almighty power at work within us, God is able to accomplish infinitely more than we would ever dare to ask, hope, dream, think, or even imagine. In this campaign, God has presented us with the opportunity to generously share his gifts with each other and the community to show his love and do his work. Together, we can go beyond ourselves and help build a bridge from today into tomorrow. Let us pray. Loving God, out of your grace, you have led us through a rich history of following Jesus. By your Holy Spirit, lead us through this continued journey of generous faith for today and tomorrow as we reach beyond ourselves. Out of your great abundance, let your blessings flow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able. You can either face the back or stay where you can see the screen as we confess our sins and hear God's words of forgiveness for us together. We confess our sins before God and before one another. Gracious God, we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We need to be reformed and made new. We have taken what is not ours and justified our actions. We have turned away from your wisdom. We have not done justice, loved kindness, nor walk humbly with you. Forgive us for the harms we have caused through word and action, and reform us to the joy of following your will for us. God knows our every weakness and yet loves us without ceasing. Rejoice and be glad, for through Jesus Christ, God forgives you all your sins and makes you new. You have been reformed. Amen. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. We sing together, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, number 504.
Let us pray. Generous God, you promised Solomon whatever he wanted, and he asked you only for the wisdom to serve you. Grant us that same wisdom that we might work for your justice in the world. Amen. may be seated. Our scripture reading today comes from 1 Kings chapter 3. The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the principal high place Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness and righteousness and in uprightness of heart towards you, and you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. Although I am only a little child, I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil, for who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor all your life. No other king shall compare with you. If you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your life. Then Solomon awoke. It had been a dream. He came to Jerusalem where he stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. He offered up burnt offerings and offerings of well-being and provided a feast for all his servants. Later, two women who were prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. One woman said, Please, my lord, this woman and I live in the same house, and I gave birth while she was in the house. Then on the third day after I gave birth, this woman also gave birth. We were together there, we were together. There was no one else with us in the house. Only the two of us were in the house. Then this woman's son died in the night because she lay on him. She got up in the middle of the night and took my son from beside me while your servant slept. She laid him at her breast and laid her dead son at my breast. When I rose in the morning to nurse my son, I saw that he was dead. But when I looked at him closely in the morning, clearly it was not the son that I had born. But the other woman said, No, this living son is mine, and the dead son is yours. The first said, No, the dead son is yours, and the living son is mine. And so they argued before the king. Then the king said, One says, This is my son that is alive, and your son is dead. While the other says, Not so, your son is dead, and my son is the living one. So the king said, Bring me a sword. And they brought a sword before the king. The king said, Divide the living boy in two. Then give half to one and half to the other. But the woman whose son was alive said to the king, Because compassion for her son burned within her, Please, my lord, give her the living boy. Certainly do not kill him. The other said, It shall be neither mine nor yours. Divide it. Then the king responded, Give the first woman the living boy. Do not kill him. She is his mother. 
All Israel heard of the judgment that the king had rendered, and they stood in awe of the king, because they perceived that the wisdom of God was in him to execute justice. Word of God, word of life. Good morning. Children, you can head right up front, and I will meet you there. very smart children up here today, so we're going to have a little discussion. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to come up. You guys can come up a little bit farther. There we go. So what if I said today, you can have anything you want. What would you ask for? Anything. Miss Addie? Um, a big toy. A big toy. Oh. Sunshine. Sunshine. You might, you might get that today. Anybody else? Something even bigger? A new puppy? Yes. Oh, Lydia, you're so sweet. Money to give to the poor. Luke, you got anything? Kathleen? Something really big? Well, you know what? Somebody in our story today did. God said, Solomon, you can have whatever you want. Would any of you want wisdom? Probably all of you, we all want, you know what? Because God wants us to have wisdom. And that's what Solomon asked for. He asked for wisdom to discern his kingdom. He wanted to know the right thing and make good choices. Do you guys always make the best choices in things? I know, I, I know. I don't either. I don't either. You know what? Sometimes I go out in the middle of the night and burn leaves. Probably not the smartest choice. I know. Pastor Rob's told me not a good choice when there's coyotes out there, Cindy. But I've done that, so not a good choice. And then another bad choice I make is when I go to McDonald's and get a Coke. That's not a good choice. And sometimes the line gets really long and I pass by like I did this morning. I didn't get a Coke. So that was, but sometimes we make those bad choices. But God wants us to have wisdom. And so did anybody just get a report card? No report cards yet? I just know some people that just got some report cards and they got on the honor roll so that they're doing really well. But I know you guys are all really smart. Do you know what the difference between being really smart and wisdom is? I know that, that can be kind of confusing. Alfred said understanding math and, and language and that kind of thing is being smart and making the right choices is wisdom. See, I don't even need to be up here today. You guys always know. That's awesome. I wonder if all the people out here always make good choices. Hmm. I'm looking around. Oh, they're shaking their head. Not always the best choices. But you know what? God gives us wisdom. And Solomon was a very, very wise man and made some good choices and discerned. He, was, he, he gave us all kinds of good things in the Bible. But you know where his wisdom came from? Like, we can read our books, and I love this book because it says, where to find it in the Bible. Do you know that I have challenged myself throughout my 60 plus years to find something that God can't help me with? It's all in here. The complete instruction book for life. Everything is in here. So when we read God's word, when we come to Sunday school, and today we're going to hear this story, and you guys are going to be a part of it with happy face, sad face in our story today. So it's going to be a fun story to hear. But when you come to Sunday school, when we pray, when we hear God's word, and when we read and study his, the Bible, God's true words, it gives us wisdom. Wisdom isn't always up here in our head. Do you know where wisdom's at? Yes, you are right. Again, in our hearts. That's where our wisdom is. God wants us all to have his wisdom to make the right choices in our lives. So sometimes we may think one or the other, and if we don't know what to do, what can we do? Make the right choice, but we can. We can pray. We can ask for God's help, and God will always help us because he's always with us. So he can always help us make the right decision. And sometimes when we don't make the right decision, what he can also help us because he can guide us in the right way or he can forgive us. 
when we make those bad choices. So let's pray. And I'll let you guys repeat after me, because I did make a prayer today, so you guys can follow me, but I'm gonna, I didn't memorize it, so we're going to write, we're going to do it. So let's pray. I should have been a little wiser and flipped it. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us what we need. Help us to look to you for wisdom. To make good decisions and have discernment. Help us make wise choices in our lives. Thank you for your great love. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys for coming up, and you guys can take one of these with you. Here, Alfred. Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and from the Holy Spirit who moves in and through us with every breath we take. Amen. Two weeks ago, we talked about how we are in these sacred stories. If you haven't been with us this fall, we're using what's called the narrative lectionary. And all fall, we're in the Old Testament moving through these stories, some familiar and some not so familiar as we move through sacred scripture, story from the B-I-B-L-E, yes, it's the book for me, story of God's covenant, God's promise, God's care for God's people, story of God among us as God's people, story of those who've gone before us that tie into our story of how we live in relationship with God and with one another. How many of you knew this story that we heard from Curse Kings today? Some of you know it. Last night I asked my father-in-law, pastor of 50 plus years, if he's ever preached on this, and the answer was a quick no. He's wiser than I am. The part about Solomon asking for wisdom, the first part of our text, is in the revised common lectionary that we've normally used before this. The story of the two women and the infant is not in the Revised Common Lectionary. The story starts at Gibeon as the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, ask what I should give you. And yes, God acts first, but as I hear this, I can't help but think of this image and think of how often we come to God as though God is the genie that we hope will grant our wishes. I think our youth were just even better than Solomon, perhaps, But how impressive that Solomon's request when God says, ask what I should give you, asks for wisdom, and not just wisdom for his own sake, not just wisdom to make him better for himself, but wisdom so that he might be able to govern and judge the people that he has been called to lead with all faithfulness and wisdom. And so if we keep reading then, I think God perhaps is the one who makes a mistake in the answer. As God said to him, because you've asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. Awesome. No one like you has been before you and no one like you shall arise after you. Okay. And then God says, I give you also what you have not asked both riches and honor, fame among the people all your life, and no one shall compare with you. The wisdom is a good thing, but all the riches, honor, and power, not so much. You've heard this line before, probably. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. No matter how good you are, no matter what got you into that place of care, of leadership, of watching over others, it seems to always be true. No matter what side of the political side you fall on, it seems that absolute power corrupts absolutely. The quote is attributed to Lord Acton, a mid-1800s English historian, writer, and politician. 
and we see how it was true in scripture long ago and how it still unfortunately lives out today. Last week, remember, we were in part of David's story. You remember the Bible story, you remember Sunday school, right? David and Goliath, the shepherd boy who comes with the sling and the stone. It's his slaying of the giant Goliath that leads him to this place of becoming king of the people. A boy who starts so humbly, simply defending his brothers and the army behind him with his sling and stone becomes king and he does so many great things. But you heard last week's story, right? You know how Solomon became his son. You know Bathsheba was not his wife. And then we get Solomon's story, and he starts out so well, asking for wisdom that he might judge the people, lead the people. But at the end of his life, Solomon will have thousands of wives from many foreign countries and be doing things that not so great. In fact, if you read these stories in the Old Testament, it's enough to make you think that people that want to ban books today probably haven't read the Old Testament. There's a lot in here that tells of how people were long ago and unfortunately can connect into today. It didn't end there. Today, of course, is Reformation Sunday. And as we look at Reformation Sunday, we say, talk about Martin Luther. And as we talk about Martin Luther, we have to say, where do you find your refuge and strength as we sing a mighty fortress? Where do you turn to find a stronghold and fortress in the midst of life's storms, literal and figurative? Like the real literal, not the fake literal. Like how did the word literally become the opposite of what it truly means, right? You all know what I'm talking about. You don't have teenage girls, do you? They say literally when they mean really that's not how it, anyway. Luther, of course, if you don't know this story, was out literally in a storm. And as the thunder crashed and the lightning flashed, he prayed out to God as he was a student in law school, saying, God, if you keep me safe in this storm, I will become a priest. And God kept him safe and he honored his word and he became a priest and he devoted himself to studying scripture and to digging deep into God's word and to looking at how this ancient of words still is the word that by the power of the Holy Spirit is speaking and moving us, the church today. And Luther saw some issues in the church as there was corruption that came from absolute power. And so he said, I'm gonna go nail this 95 theses of the church door. We would ask today that you either call or send an email. Glass doors wouldn't do well. But he was committed to having a conversation about who are we as the church and what is this gift of grace for all of us. So today on this Reformation Sunday, we get to affirm the baptism of some of our youth, six of our youth who've gone through confirmation. And I know that Pastor Scott wishes that he were here and that he were the one preaching today, but since he isn't, I plan on doing a pop quiz to make sure that our confirmands are ready to affirm their baptism. Maybe I'll ask you all, since that's later today, who knows what that says? Confirmation for adults will start next Sunday between services. <laughs> It'll be immediately following first service. Your attendance is expected. Simul justus et peccator. It's the only Latin I can say. That we are simultaneously saint and sinner. And so I'm not picking on Solomon or David. I'm naming what we all have in common. This isn't about those who live outside of the church. This is about those of us who devote ourselves to being a part of the church. This is naming who we are in our humanity, that even though we have been baptized, even though we've been claimed in the waters of baptism, even though the cross was marked on your forehead and we heard those lines that you've been mark marked with the cross of Christ and sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit forever, we are simultaneously saint and sinner, even as we choose to have more money to give to the poor, we also have bad thoughts about our siblings. I don't know, I'm just picking on one example. Um, right? We, even at the same time, are making wise and 
wonderful choices of love for the sake of our neighbors in need, and yet we are caught up in our own guilty pleasures, and we are living a life that doesn't honor who God has created and called us to be. We are simultaneously saint and sinner, and because we are saint and sinner, there is a need for reformation. You did so bad on the first one, I won't even ask you about this one. Semper reformata, the church must always be reforming. Thank God for God's wisdom. Thank God for leaders in the church who are willing to push the boundaries, who are willing to say this isn't the way that it has to be, this isn't the way that maybe it's supposed to be, maybe this is how we've done it for so long, but maybe it's time for us as the church to see beyond into a new way. Maybe we got caught so caught up in the ways that we've always experienced it and expected the church to be that we didn't realize how we were pushing others out. With wisdom, in communal conversation, with leaders pushing the way, as people of faith, we grow and we change. We confess our sins. We name that we need God to be the one to lead us. Here's an example. How many people living in this world who've married their partner and are so in love have been told by the church that they aren't welcome in the church because of who they love? Thank God we've grown in our wisdom and our understanding and we've come to appreciate that our God is a God of love. That our God is not a God who pushes anyone out, no matter what you're doing or what you're living, but a God who welcomes us in fully into community, into relationship with God and with others. And so as a church, we've come a long way in naming that we welcome all to come and hear God's love for each of us. And as God's people, our challenge in each and every day, in each and every moment, with each decision we make, is that we are called to choose love. The story that we heard from 1 Kings is filled with so many nuances that we'd have to sit down in Bible study to really get into the text together, to wrestle with this, to understand all that's happening in here. The two women are not named. The way that they're making money is named, but they are not named. English translations have tried to make it clear which woman is which and which woman is telling the truth, but the Hebrew language is intentionally vague as they first are arguing and then as Solomon comes with the sword to make a decision. And we know that Solomon prayed for wisdom. We don't know where the wisdom stepped in because this is how a dispute of this type would have been handled in this day, right? If two people were arguing about a piece of land or other property, the decision would have been divide it in half and give each of them half. And so Solomon treats this case like he would treat any other case and says, bring me my sword and we'll cut the baby in half. We don't know, was it really the mother of that child that said, spare the child and let her have him? Or was it not? These women have just given birth. Any of you who've given birth know that in that first week, you're full of a bit of emotion, right? And we don't know what all the nuances of this story are and what all is happening. What we do know is that love is hard. We know that we hear throughout scripture that we are to lean lean towards love and justice for the orphan and for the widow and for the vulnerable. And these women were not widows and this child was not an orphan, but certainly there is a whole lot of vulnerability in this story. And it reminds us that love is hard and yet it reminds us that even when love is hard, we are called to choose Life is difficult. Anybody not had a difficult life at all? Life is difficult. And in those moments when the difficulties seem to be pounding against us, it's the love and care and compassion and generosity and forgiveness and grace shown to us by others that sustains us. 
This is a love and a care, a compassion, generosity, forgiveness, and grace that we've learned by the way from being recipients of those same gifts from God. We share what God has first given us. We know this gift of love through Jesus Christ. And as we've known this gift of love, we live it out and we share it, even when it is hard to choose love. I will confess to the confirmands later, I'll confess to you now, you've probably figured it out. I have one sermon. You know what it is already, don't you? Jesus loves you. There is nothing that you can do to earn this love. It is a gift for you from God because of who you are as a loved child of God. So now that you have and know this promise of love for you, go. Go and do something about it. Go and share it. Go and live it. Go and let others know that this love is for them too. May you know how loved you are. May you choose love in the difficult decisions. And may others know God's love through you. Amen. We sing together number 478. I believe it might be wrong in your bulletin. It's right on the screen. Number 478, Father, we thank you. Gathered as sisters and brothers in Christ, let us affirm our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In gratitude and humility, 
Let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. Almighty God, we pray for the church. Write your law of love on the hearts of your people, that we remain steadfast in our witness to your grace. Bless all who are affirming their baptism. Open their hearts to your Holy Spirit. Teach them your word and give them courage to proclaim their faith. We pray for Ella Derry, Briley Harmson, Claire James, Aaliyah Knutson, Cecilia Papasia, Zachary Rediger. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God, our liberator, we pray for your earth. Bring new life to overused land and contaminated rivers. Reform and reorient our relationship with the environment that we faithfully care for all of your creation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God, our refuge and strength, we pray for the nations. Where they are in an uproar, bring wise leadership and comfort for those in distress. Make wars to cease and peace to enter every land. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God, our very present help in trouble, we pray for those in need in our church, our community, our nation, and our world. We especially pray for members of our saviors, Johanna, Gert, Fred and Lois, Ron, Kent, Dave, Lynn, Marjorie, Jerry, Dale, Don, Charlie and Jill, Ted, Elsie, Ginny, Paula, Roger, Julie, Stephanie, Sandra, Mary, Wayne. And we pray for families and friends of our saviors, Kay, Phyllis, Jamie, Brandon, George, Dave, Karen, Ann, Elijah, Frank, Tom, Paula. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God, our stronghold, we give thanks for those who have gone before us in faith, especially Martin Luther and all reformers. Renew and reform us as we strive to continue in your word. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. We invite you to share the peace of Christ with those around you as you and they are comfortable. We pray together. God, we have not earned your grace or the abundance with which you shower it upon us. In gratitude for your favor, we give back what we have been given. 
for the sake of all your people. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We lift, lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks to God for the gift, and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Those of you who are worshiping online, we invite you to gather elements you may have of bread and wine or juice, and whether by yourself or with your household or friends, to commune as you hear the words, the body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Those of you here, ushers will dismiss you to come forward with hands open to receive a gift. You'll receive the wafer, the bread, the body of Christ. After you eat, you can then take the outer section, the dark colored wine, or the inside section, the lighter colored grape juice, the blood of Christ. After you drink, you'll head towards the baskets. Again, today's the fifth Sunday, and if you choose, there'll be people there ready to use oil to make the sign of the cross on your forehead and say a simple line of blessing and prayer over you. You can dispose your cups and make your way back. It is Christ who sets this table and who invites all of us to come taste and see. If you've ever been told or made to feel for whatever reason, that you are not welcome. Know that here at Our Saviors, we celebrate that it is Christ who welcomes you to this gift, not just of bread and wine, but grace, mercy, and forgiveness. Come and eat and drink. You may be seated.
Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you've refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. On your way out to the right to the social hall for coffee and donuts, don't forget to stop at the Information Center, sign up for all the ministry happenings. Excited to see you tonight, 5 to 7 at Montatisi. Again, if you didn't RSVP, we got space. Just give me a heads up and we'll add you to the list. Some exciting news. It's going to be a fun night. Hope to see you there. Go in peace with Christ beside you. Thanks.